having uh, technical practical sessions throughout the next two days. Um, Agroecology is a community of farmers and researchers uh, sharing knowledge on agroecology and sustainable farming. Um, we bring together research from a broad range of organisations, some of which are, many of which are represented here um, over the next few days, um, looking at how we can support uh, farmers on a transition to more sustainable farming systems. Um, so I encourage you all to get involved. We've got a sign-up sheet going around at the back there somewhere. Um, and follow us on Twitter, um, ask your questions. Um, and yeah, uh, we also will be filming this session, so you'll be able to watch it afterwards. Um, so the next topic is something I'm really excited about, um, looking at agroecological approaches to weed management. Um, and I will pass over to Nicola Cannon from the Royal Agricultural University, um, who will chair the session. Um, afterwards, we're also having a weed surgery in the room next door, um, which is an opportunity for you to ask your questions, share your experiences. Um, so, yeah, come along and get involved. Nicola. Great. Thank you, Katie. Um, welcome here to the session entitled Plants in the Wrong Place, or, or as we often call them, weeds. Um, I always think about weeds in what they do, and we're going to hear lots about that. Um, you know, we always say plants need light water and nutrients to grow, so do weeds, and therefore it's about competition and, and how everything interacts together. And we've got a fantastic range of speakers today from Rothamsted, ADAS, and Dalesford as a practitioner, and I think you're in for a treat. So I'll let them get ahead and, and uh, on with the session. So we're starting with Lynn. Okay, thank you Nicola and good morning everybody. Happy New Year. Good start to the year to see lots of people here. So today I'm going to talk about integrated weed management. If I can get to the first slide. <laughs> Please. Apologies. Okay. Thank you. Right, so this is going to be quite a whistle-stop tour of weed management. Obviously, in 10 minutes, there's a lot I can't discuss, but hopefully I'll give you a bit of a flavour of my ideas. So when you're thinking about weed management, you're thinking about the whole weed cycle. So it's not a one-year fix. It, you've got to think across a rotation and plan for many years ahead. So thinking across that whole cycle, you have to think where you are within the life of the weed. So whether you're in the seed bank phase, the early emergence and um, seedling phase, through to growth and seed production. So you can see on my slide here, I've put a few things in different categories. These are some of the key things that I'm going to cover today. Um, hopefully, um, they're aspects that people will be quite familiar with. So, as I said, you've got to think about where you are in that cycle, and the, the aim all the time is not to get to the seed production. You want to break that cycle, so it's very different to thinking about your crop and what you want from your crop. Obviously, with your weeds, you don't want to produce that um, seed bank that goes on and on and on for, for many years. So, if I start with the seed bank phase, this is seed bank and early emergence. Obviously, for you, a key thing is to identify your weeds. I know it sounds really basic, really silly, and I'm sure most people here are very familiar with the weeds they have, but be really sure you know what you have and what you're dealing with, whether they're perennial species, annual species, you'll then deal with them very differently. So your choice of cultivation could be very different if you've got creeping thistle in your field to whether you've got a grass species that's an annual species. So that's a very, very important aspect, and obviously a lot of the time you've got more than one species. So you've really got to consider what you've got and the kind of quantities of, of what you've got and what's your biggest problem. There's all sorts of different things you can do before you even plant your crop. So I've thrown in here germination enhancers. It's something you could think about. You know, a lot of people would just think of that as your cultivation stimulates growth and then you can kill off that growth, whether that be with glyphosate if you're conventional or another tillage system if you're organic. But smoky water is something that people are looking into at the moment. It's a, it's a research um, thing people are playing with. So there's other aspects of germinating those seeds, getting them to chit, grow, and then kill them before you even plant your crop. And then another aspect, again, I've thrown in for a bit of discussion later, germination in the dark. Some species 
actually need that stimulation of light, that flush of light when the cultivator is going through to make them germinate. So if you would rather they stayed in the seed bank and didn't germinate and declined in the seed bank, then perhaps cultivation in the dark is something for you to play around with and consider. So it might be a bit of a wacky idea, but something that could be quite good um, depending on what species you've got. Alleliopathy. We can't have a discussion about weeds without thinking about alleliopathy. I've done a lot of work in the past with um, certain cover crop species such as buckwheat to see whether it controls species such as cooch. Um, there's lots of things there that, you, again, you can look into and investigate and there are uh, certain species that will have these alleliopathic properties that are very good at killing or suppressing weeds before you've perhaps planted your um, cash crop. With all weeds, there's obviously a dormancy phase, and again, knowing your species, you need to know um, what the dormancy is for that. So grasses could be very different for, from other species. I won't go into a lot of detail about this, but it's always something to consider. And then cover crops. Again, we can have a whole morning session on cover crops, but think about the choice of the cover crop for you, for your land, for your soil type, to suppress those species. That's the key thing you want to do when you've got this big weed burden, is suppress those weed species. But you also must be sure that that cover crop isn't going to become a weed in itself in the future. So really think about your toy choice of cover crops. So moving on slightly, thinking about the cultivations and where your seeds are in the seed bank. So we spend a lot of time looking at weeds that we can see. They've emerged, they're pretty, they're on the surface. Well, I think they're pretty. Um, but we don't think about where the seeds are in the seed bank. And this is absolutely crucial. So if you've just had... Um, seed shedding from the previous harvest and they're on the surface, Cho your choice of cultivation could have a big impact of where they then go into that soil profile and then what emerges in the next crop. So if you're ploughing, for example, which is a graphic on this slide, if you see them on the soil surface and then you think you could plough those down and bury them, they could decline over years, so many grasses will do that, um, but you don't want to be obviously ploughing them back up the next year. The benefit of ploughing and, and burying them deep, you want to keep them there so they decline and you're not bringing that problem back up. But ploughing doesn't work for everybody, but this is just really to illustrate thinking about where those seeds are going and what they're doing once they're under the soil and you can't see them. So just thinking about ploughing, if you are going to plough, do it properly. And there's obviously lots and lots of um, ways that people plough, but we see fields like this with big tufts of black grass. This, this is black grass here emerging. So obviously it hasn't been properly inverted. We're getting all sorts of patchy um, black grass emergence, and then this will go on into poor crop emergence and um, the weed problem will be pushed into the crop. So again, think about how you're doing these cultivations. And if you want to do a minimum cultivation, keep it really, really minimum and really shallow. So again, this is just an example here of a plough versus non-inversion. This is the same field. And you can see there on, the, um, on your right-hand side that the non-inversion has produced a huge flush of grass weeds. This is ahead of us drilling the crop. So we can now control those, whether again it be glyphosate or, or a um, mechanical way, we can get rid of that before the crop is actually um, established. So moving away from the emergence and seed production phase, going into the growth phase, think about the crop choice. So if you have a big weed burden, what, what competitive crop could you have in there? Are there different cultiv um, cultivars within that crop choice that you can use to suppress those weeds? So I'll come on to that in a little bit more detail in a minute. Obviously, mechanical weeding is probably very, very familiar to a lot of people here. There's all sorts of options available, hoeing, inter-row hoeing. There's the system chameleon that's a, a newer system that some people are, are very um, keen on now. Electrical weeding, again, I'll touch on this in a moment. That's a new method that we're using within um, horticultural systems and fruit and veg. Perhaps this can be something to use in arable systems in the future. Um, and then the use of lasers and flame weeding, not used perhaps so commonly in the UK, but it is used across Europe. Um, and grazing, so can we open up those rotations more and bring in grazing, whether that's just for one year or multiple years, and again, I'm going to talk about that in a moment. So staying on the topic of um, competitive crops and cultivars, this is an example here of the use of hybrid barley. This is in a field with a very high black grass burden. So we've got hybrid barley grown alongside conventional barley and winter wheat, and the figures are that the hybrid barley we had 63% less seed return from blackgrass 
than the conventional barley and 83% than the wheat in that very, very same field. So for us, the hybrid barley was an excellent choice of crop in that particular field. This is a conventional um, farm, but again, it was a, it's a variety now. We've looked at this um, research over a couple of years and we're getting very similar results year on year and excellent results against competitive black grass. So on a slightly different subject coming across the electrical weeding that I've touched on, great potential of this method um, in different farming areas. So this is um, an, a crop of black currants. We've been looking at this trial, this is the second year now, and you can see the collaborators working together. There's information on the Innovative Farmers stand in the main hall if anyone's interested more or come to our weed surgery if you want to hear more about this. But we're looking at controlling perennial and annual species, but really focusing on the perennials under the black currant crops. So we, it can be all sorts of different um, bush and cane fruit, but it's black currants that we're particularly looking at, again, in, con in conventional organic systems. So it's whether we can take these um, machines up and down the rows, as you maybe would mow, um, and use the electrical currents to, to kill these weeds. So again, trials are in progress, but please come and ask for, for further detail if this is of interest to you. There's also work in, in different veg crops at the moment, and we're hoping this could go into arable and grassland in the future. So talking about widening the rotation and thinking about what else you could do within that rotation, throwing something different into the pot. This is a project that my colleague's working on, Lizzie Sagu, who's here today in a session later on if you're interested in grass lays. Um, so it's whether we can integrate, this is beef production, but perhaps it could be sheep or anything into arable systems. So can we break that cycle, have a, a lay for a couple of years, um, and have sheep on the farm. You may not have sheep yourself, but they could be borrowed from somebody. But this, this one is obviously looking at the economics um, and the impacts of having beef on, you know, within an arable system. Um, and again, it's, it's early stages of the project, but we are, I'm investigating the aspects of the black grass management within this as well. The key focus is actually soil health. So the final aspects that I'm going to cover are then the seed production phase. So we hope we don't get that far, and we hope that you've managed to get rid of your weeds before we get there, but obviously the reality is we've always still got weeds at this stage. So it's still trying to prevent that seed return. When you see the weeds above the crop, is there still a way you can remove them? So if these are grass weeds, there's various methods people do use. In Australia, they're using this um, harvest seed management, so the, the Harrington seed destructor is a very good method of controlling um, ryegrass. However, in the UK, our black grass tends to shed before we're able to take it off at the same time as harvest. So this isn't a method that necessarily can immediately be adapted to the UK, but people are starting to look at this type of methodology now to try and remove those um, grass weeds at harvest and make sure they don't go back into the seed bank. So think about cleanliness all the time, thinking about where you're harvesting, how you're moving weeds around your farm. Um, and also options such as silage or crimped grain is perhaps a method that might work well for you if you're in an area where you could perhaps use that grain to go on to feed if the black grass was so bad or other grasses were so bad that year. So there's many other options that could be used, but we must prevent seed return all the time. For the perennial weeds, there's obviously other options such as um, weed surfers um, and uh, weed wipers that could perhaps be used. Um, on to my next. So, and perhaps with the weed wiper, it might not always need to be glyphosate. Maybe we could adapt this with the electrical um, systems that we're using. Perhaps this could be a method we could use to get rid of the thistle heads and get rid of uh, charlock and, and a lot of the difficult species that come up above the crop at harvest. There's a project, on, and again, another innovative farmers um, field lab at the moment, looking at crimperola and how to get rid of your cover crops. Um, that you, you want to destroy your cover crop before you sow your next crop. So again, there's, a, there's an active group looking at that at the moment. And there's lots of other options such as mowing and surfing that we talked about. So we really are now at today's word technology, I'm calling it. We, robots are here, they're useful, they're something we can use and adapt, and I think people are using them already. Um, so there's lots of things we can do to identify weed patches. We can use drones, we can use systems on the combine. Um, to map our weeds ahead of the next year. Obviously, those are quite often a slower system because you map and then you treat the next year or you control the next year. But there's a system here, the ladybird system on the left. This is in Australia. It's going up and down in veg crops. And it uses solar panels, and then it can identify and spot and tree weeds as it goes. So 
it's still in development. There's, there's a long way to go with these things, but I think these new technologies are something that we'll be seeing more and more of, and they're different ways that we can use um, to control weeds in the future. So to try and summarise, again, so apologies for the very whistle-stop tour, but I think the main thing for me is thinking about rotations and diversity. It must be as diverse as possible, your whole rotation and your cropping choices, to try and control the weeds and keep on top of them. If you break those weed cycles, you can keep on top of them and you can eliminate as many as you can. Um, so integrated processes, we've talked about, I've talked about a number of different things here very quickly, but not one of those is going to be the fix. You've got to pick a, a selection of those that will work well for you and things might work well in different years depending on the weather conditions. Um, so try and embrace new technologies, experiment and communicate, work with your neighbours, talk to your friends. I think the more, the, you know, we're using the, um, the field labs now for people to go away and experiment themselves. So it's lovely for us as researchers to integrate with, with practitioners and make sure that we're all talking um, and learning from each other. And cleanliness is very important in terms of weed seed return and moving seeds around the farm. So always think about where your machinery is going or if you've got contractors coming in on your farm, where have they been and where are they going and make sure things are clean. And finally, it is a long-term approach, I'm afraid. There isn't a one quick fix. You must be persistent and you must be patient, but you can get there and you can see the change. So thank you very much. I'll leave it there.